Well, good afternoon, everybody. Today's Friday, November 6, 2020. I'm Scott again from the Falmouth Health Department doing your weekly COVID-19 update for the town. Uh, our website is falmouthmass.us. Our email is health at falmouthma.gov. And our phone number for the health office is 508-495-748. So where are we? Well, as of, well, this is as of last night, the 309 cases. I think today uh, we're at 312. Actually, we had three come in today. Um, which is more than what we're getting, and I'll talk about that in a second. Of, uh, so we've had that many cases uh, as of uh, March 19th at the beginning. Um, there have been 17 confirmed cases during the period from October 18th to, 30, to the 31st. I run that report in tandem with the state's, uh, uh, the state map that shows whether you're gray, green, yellow, or red. Uh, actually, that map has not come out. Uh, they redid their dashboards, and yesterday they didn't have that, so I'm going to end up showing you the old one. But We'll get into that in a minute. About 94 cases, because as you have more cases that come, you know, recently, that number is going to drop because those take us some time to come out of isolation. Uh, we're still about average for Barnstable County. We're expected to be around 14 percent. We're at 14.7. Of course, the CTC at the state, the VNA, and myself, and well, the health department, uh, you know, continue to do the perform the isolation, contact tracing, calls, follow-ups, things of that nature to uh, minimize spread. Uh, looking at our chart, this, this chart shows um, all cases by week. Each, each dot represents how many cases we had in the week. And as you can see from about late May all the way to about uh, late October, we were in the 10 or less, except with the exception of one week. But then you see the last two weeks, we've been around 11.8, around in that near 11.7, somewhere in that area. So we are seeing that there's been a couple more cases than we would see on an average week. Usually, I get a case, uh, with, well, we've been averaging between 10 and 14 cases, one, one a day, slightly less than one a day. Um, we've seen over the last, I think, probably I'd say the last week, I haven't seen more like two a day. And so um, you, we're starting to see the increase that the rest of the state's getting. You look at the weekly case trend, you can see that the curve, you know, we have flat, and you can see the last couple of um, dots show a little bit of a steepness to our curve. Um, and those aren't necessarily like at the like like at the um, the July where we had the lifeguards and and the long term care where you'll see there was a, a blip up and then flattening. We're sort of on a steady sort of increase, um, not a horrible increase, but we are seeing an increase. Um, this is last week's state map, and I'm sorry that I just don't have this week's. It's not out yet. I just checked. Uh, it shows us in green. If you look down below, all right. It shows what the town would be to get to each color. Okay, so less than five cases over a 14 day would be gray. If we hit five, we would be green. If we hit 17, we would be yellow. And if we hit 35 in a two week uh, time frame, we would be in the red. Um, I counted them up yesterday and I had 17, so I think we'd be right at 17. And it also depends on when they pull the data. I pull it by day, they might pull it at a certain time, whatever, but really it should be right around the same. And so that would put us right at the right at yellow at the beginning of yellow. Um, when that map comes out, that's what I would expect. Um, they may have pulled the data slightly different the end of one day versus another as the cases roll in. So um, we're right at the uh, right at the beginning of yellow. Um, and we have not been yellow. So and that shows that we are starting to see some more cases come in. Where the cases are coming from. Um, we have several household clusters, meaning that if one person brings it home, one, two, or three or more of the family members get it. That's been probably about roughly a third of the cases. There's been some uh, cases with travel, uh, with health care. There's a couple with uh, health care workers that are either in health or mental health or substance abuse, those types of congregate, uh, congregate arrangements or hospitals or so forth. We've had a couple of those. Um, we've had five cases that are sort of been one-offs at this point. Um, and so that's kind of where we've been at. So it's been sort of a mixed bag. And so that's where we are for this. So I hopefully I get for next week they update the charts, you know, a little bit quicker than they had. This isn't really, this is all last week's data, so I'm going to jump right through this. I was hoping this morning to be able to add to this. Um, it just shows that last, the, la the two weeks, the, tw the two weeks prior to the 29th, we had 10. And I think right now we're at 17. We had a couple of weeks, if you look, the only thing I could say about this, on the 7th and the 14th, we were really close with 15 to being in the yellow. So we've been hovering in that heavy green to almost yellow, and I think this week we'd be in the yellow. Um, Barnstable County, as you can see, towards the end of October, has had the 26th, the 34th. There's been some uh, cluster outbreaks associated with different things uh, mid-Cape. 
which has had some of us in our high teens to low 20s and one high day of 34. Uh, the last days were like zero, uh, I mean 10, 5, 13, which is more what we were seeing earlier in the month. And uh, hopefully we've, if those towns have contained uh, those increases. Uh, Barnstable County had 11 as of yesterday. Their total case count of confirmed is a little over, it's a 2,089 cases. There was no deaths reported yesterday. Um, this is what the dashboard looks. It does change, so the da state's dashboard does look a bit different uh, starting this week, and after 4 o'clock, roughly every day, they give this. If you look, it's newly confirmed cases of 1,700, which is a high number, um, but, you all, but you have to look at the total number of tests, 86,000 daily tests, because now they're starting to include total number of tests, not people who have never gotten a test for before and are getting it for, a net for the first time. This would include routine testing, such as colleges, prisons, long-term care, health care, People that are getting more routine tests. The seven-day average positivity is 1.91. Two is the magic number. Anything over two, you start thinking about community spread. You got community spread. One is or less than the disease is on the downcrease, is how it's been taught to me. About 18,279 active cases. Hospitalizations has been around 500. ICU has been around 100. Um, average age of hospitalization is 67. You know that it's, it tends to hit the elderly, the older people more. Total uh, reported deaths among confirmed, which is 23. We've been in that sort of high teens, low 20s for most. The average age of death is 80. And they're averaging about 1.79 days turnaround for a PCR test. If you look at the uh, right-hand column, it shows, um, and I, I've got another slide that really shows this well, that you show that the under 30 group is the group that's getting cases more as opposed to earlier in the season where it was more el the, older, the older population. This chart shows that, it, we call it a rainbow chart is what I call it. You can see where the, the uh, people over the age of um, 80 and were, as it is shown in red, um, and people that are over between seven. So anybody over 70 would either be yellow or red. And you can see that earlier on in the left-hand column in the Aprils and to May, you had more older people getting it. And now you can see way at the far right, you can see more blue, which, and we see a lot less red, which is good, and that's probably why the hospitalizations aren't where they are, you know, where they were actually early in the spring, is, is related to the age group of people that are getting it. So under, under 40 is over 50% of the cases now, as opposed to over 40 was somewhere, I mean, 40 or younger represent over 50% of the cases. If you looked at the orange, the dark blue, and the light blue on the right-hand column, if you go all the way back at the beginning of March, you look at it's more like between 20 and 40 percent all the way uh, in the spring around the May time was more, um, you were getting less cases. So it's the younger population that are getting, um, getting the disease at this point more, more often. This change around is, ten, is before the seven day average of new, new confirmed cases. Um, the lowest value observed in the time frame that they've used is of 157. We're at an average of 918, which is 485 percent higher. Um, the test rate has been higher. Lowest we've had is 0.8 in the state. We're at pretty darn close to two. Um, hospitalizations has a steady increase. More cases, you will have more hospitalizations. It hasn't been as bad because again, the uh, younger the younger kids are are getting it under 30 or under 40. Um, and we've been average again in the teens, low 20s for deaths per day. Um, this chart's a new, a new. This shows um, total daily confirmed cases since the beginning. You can see that peak up in May, and then we had the crashes. We started doing social distancing and closures and phases and that stuff. Starting around July, it got really good um, until about September, and you've seen a steady increase from about September through November. You see, a, you see an increase, um, and we'll talk about what the governor's done, the state's done um, to help uh, thwart an increase in cases. This is interesting in the testing by date, molecular percent positive. The dark blue is what the average is of all tests. The light blue is the averages, because they started this around September, of, with um, higher education, so testing the, the college kids, the kids. So if you average the, and then the orange is a test if you took out all the college tests. So the general, I guess you could say, sort of general population, the average positivity is now around three. So our positivity is below two, but it's being driven partially by doing a lot of routine tests to uh, higher education, which brings us to that 1.9 that we said I mentioned before. You take those numbers out, you're at 3.47, which is not, not where we want to be. We want to be, again, less than two, ideally less than one. 
So that's all. I'm, this is a chart. You can check this every day on the state's website as well. Uh, hospitalizations, actually, I, that, those numbers are wrong. I just got a number in today. Those should be one at Cape Cod Hospital, one at Falmouth Hospital. I had left that blank, and then I, I happened to read a report today from the county that showed one and one because the state's not showing daily updates now with the, each individual hospital count. So I do get updates from Barstable County and Cape Cod Healthcare, which said that there was one hospitalized in each, each hospital uh, and none in the ICU. But hospitalizations are obviously up. Not up in this is, is equal to the number of cases, again, because uh, the younger population is, tends to be the, where we're finding more. ICU has been hovering around 100, and intubations have been somewhere around 50 over the last week or so. Uh, daily confirmed hospitalizations. This is a new chart that they show on the uh, daily uh, the update. You can see the hospitalizations was at a peak of uh, about 3,700 and sometime in May. We really, you know, flattened the curve is the term we use a lot, is in that back in August, started in late July. And you can start seeing the numbers creep. So, again, as long as if, you, if, you're keeping, if we're keeping the, the elderly population, the population over 65, um, free of, or relatively free, then that number will stay low, much lower than what we saw in May. But if it just goes as it was going in the spring, you would easily get back up to those numbers. And that's not something we want to see. Um, I just took, I, I thought this was important. This, the bottom right is the uh, dashboard I just showed you a couple slides ago. I randomly picked a couple of dates to show um, where we were. So on the top right is uh, the COVID dashboard from the PowerPoint presentation from Thursday, April 23rd. And you see that there was 3,000 cases, so almost double the cases. The total number of tests performed since March, so about six, eight weeks, was 195,000 where we did in one day 86,000. So I just wanted to show that um, and in May we were up to 500,000 tests, which is about what we'll probably do in you know, almost a week if we averaged 86,000, which we had done all toll up until May 21st, and we had about 1,100 cases. So we just wanted to show you that we are testing at a much higher rate. And so earlier on in the April when we had those 3,000 cases, we probably had a lot more of milder cases and we just didn't have the tests being done. It was a little harder to get a test. We were early on in the process. And now that we've uh, got much more, um, we can test that kind of a volume um, that um, the counts will go up as a result because you're catching more of the asymptomatic and mildly, mildly symptomatic that may probably would have never been tested on May 21st or April 20th. So that's just going back into the arc. Um, Long-term care, there's uh, was about, let's see, 64, 74 deaths uh, that week, from week to week, from the 29th to the 5th, associated, associated with long-term care. And our long-term care facilities are still doing fine, uh, knock on wood. And so that's, um, that will continue. Uh, COVID testing, uh, drive-through testing is still, again, at Falmouth Hospital. You can get it through uh, calling Cape Cod Health, uh, Cape Cod Healthcare, your physician would make that appointment. It's still available. As far as I know, it, the East Falmouth CVS, uh, Convenient MD, the Community Health Center of Cape Cod, you can go on mass.gov COVID testing if you need a test. With the, and I said before, previously it's about 1.79 days uh, on average for your results. So uh, testing is working. Some of the uh, pediatrician's office, I believe, are also getting or have gotten uh, rapid test methods because as kids show COVID symptoms at school, you got to make sure that you send them home. And if we can get a rapid and accurate and cheap test and relatively quick, we can put that, that child, you know, we can determine whether the child's positive or not, and it's not a sinus infection or some other symptom or some other illness. And so, the, again, the cheap, rapid, and accurate test is what we're, we're going to, and we're, we're getting there. We're there in dribs and drabs. So, again, so nothing's really tested for change for COVID testing. Again, it's the PCR test that most are getting. It does take a little bit of time. It is what's considered confirmed. The antigen test doesn't have as quite as much accuracy. I've heard as much as 30%, but it is rapid. And if you do get the antigen test, is the one place that I know of that does it in Dennis is the care mark. If you do go get it and you turn positive, you really should go get a PCR test. I would isolate until should isolate until the PCR results come in. Um, we consider though the DPH considers that Department of Public Health considers that a probable. Um, we contact trace both the probables and the confirmed. Uh, antibody tells you you may have a previous infection. We treat that as suspect. Um, not seeing as much, nearly as much antibodies. Um, so the, with the increase in cases, um, the governor uh, this week, starting uh, midnight Friday, has changed some of the state guidance. Uh, Order 53 orders the closure of all public 
Thursday we closed to the public of all specified business events nightly between 9.30 and 5 a.m. Uh, you have to stop serving. Restaurants will have to start serving at 9.30. You can't sell alcohol after 9.30. That's also going to include convenience stores and liquor stores that uh, uh, don't serve food. Uh, you can do takeout, so takeout after that uh, is fine, but um, no, uh, basically it's a sort of a curfew, so to speak, between that 9.30 and 5 a.m. Order 54 requires social distancing uh, between house, non-household members with a new capacity caps. Private residents, 10 indoors, max of 25 outdoors. Public venues, 25 indoor, 100 outdoor, uh, 50 outdoor and higher risk, and, and notifications to the Board of Health, so you would notify the Health Department, you'd call us. Now, um, if you already have um, your own guidance, such as grocery stores and things like that, that already have se sector-specific guidance, um, you would still follow your sector-specific guidance. So, you know, uh, Face, so you don't have to, so restaurants, for example, restaurants don't have a 10 door cap, okay? I mean, the public would be 25, actually. They don't have a 25 cap because they already have their own specific guidance. Office buildings would be the same. So if you already have sec schools who already have sector specific guidance spe specific to themselves, um, they would not be uh, having to follow this guidance. This is uh, for not things that don't have their own um, uh, definitive guidance. And also, it also makes, you have to report positive cases and cooperate with contact tracing. That has been a problem, getting contact tracing done. Some individuals are, you know, not. So this actually puts a legal uh, uh, responsibility on, um, on even, you know, John Q. Public or, or business or, or entity um, venues, people at host parties um, to, be, to cooperate. Order 55 requires maskings of individuals five or over at all times in public, whether indoor or outdoor, regardless of social distancing. All right. So, um, you know, this is, for my purposes, is the enforcement and the, the police. It's not something, you know, if, I wouldn't want you to call me up and say, somebody on Main Street, you need to get in your car now and track that person down. That's not necessarily going to be something that we can do. But, um, you know, we are going to, we are, the, the governor is requiring it. Um, there is some fines that could be associated with any of these violations of these orders. Um, you know, how we're going to get to that point is, well, we'll have to figure out how, from an enforcement standpoint, how to handle that, because it just came down. But uh, it is requiring masking of all individuals over five years old at all times, indoor or out, regardless of their ability to social distance. So that's a bit different. So technically, if you're walking on a beach by yourself, it doesn't matter you're out in a public place and there's nobody around you, you should still have a mask. So um, you can get these orders at mass.gov. Um, they're, they're sometimes it takes so many orders and, and guidance that sometimes it's a little hard to find. Um, if you have specific questions, especially if you're a business, somebody with a liquor license, you do, or you have some sort of a venue where the public comes in and you have trouble with the guidance, you obviously just call us at the health department. That's what we do. We'll, we'll go over it. Uh, social distancing and face coverings, again, we've got to keep, we've got to be diligent with it. The cases are starting to creep up in Falmouth. Um, you know, it, and that can get bad quick, and we don't want that to happen. And there's a delay to it, too. So, I mean, you know, if things are going, things are bad since, you know, let's say starting today, things get bad, and we're not doing the job, then, you know, I won't know necessarily for a week. So by the time, the, by the time somebody becomes symptomatic and gets tested, you start seeing the cases pop in. It's, you know, we're, we're fighting that retro to when it occurred. So we obviously don't want to undo all the hard work that we've taken since the spring and continue with the uh, stay home when ill, follow the state guidance, avoid any gatherings, parties, especially indoors. I'll be sending out some guidance for, uh, that the state put together for, uh, for, for Thanksgiving that's coming up. Um, hand washing, hand sanitizing, uh, travel, you know, minimizing travel as much as possible, um, you know, even in within Massachusetts, because Massachusetts does not meet its own travel guidance. Or quarantine. So, you know, Massachusetts technically, so it's no different from being in Massachusetts if you were going to a higher risk, you know, I would consider us high risk based on the numbers. Uh, hand washing, glove wearing, uh, hand sanitizing, those types of things are still important and uh, they'll help keep the numbers down. We know a little bit better. We know a lot more than we did in spring. And so we need to be diligent. So as a recap, uh, the state metrics continue to increase. We're starting to see an upswing in Falmouth. And we have new guidance, which is the orders 53, 54, and 55 from the governor. Um, you can call the health department if you need specific information regarding if you're a sector-specific business, if you're exempt or not, or whatever, um, you can call us.
So that's what I have this week, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks.